So I've never actually beaten a single Infinite Warfare map. I've tried Spaceland before and failed a few times and got very close. And I haven't even played any of the other zombie maps in Infinite Warfare. I do hold the world record for the fastest round 100 on Spaceland, so I'm not that bad at the map. But going in, I had no idea what these other maps were going to be like, except for people telling me that Spaceland's a good map and the other Infinite Warfare maps are bad. Now, after doing this video, I was pleasantly surprised to learn that that's not my opinion. I really, really enjoyed making this video. In general, I actually love Infinite Warfare. It. It's a top three zombies game for me now, and I can definitely see myself coming back just playing for fun. Although I will say Beast from Beyond was a bit of a letdown as the last map, and some of the Easter egg steps are kind of crazy, but I feel like it's so rewarding once you actually beat the map. So going into Spaceland, I feel like it's somewhat important to know a little bit about the story because we are going to be beating all of the maps. So basically, four people arrive to a theater to a Willard Wyler production. This is Willard Wyler, and he's actually evil, and all of his movies, or all of his productions, he uses real people and puts them in deadly situations. And so for this situation, he puts them into Spaceland, the theme park that is infested with zombies. And I find it really funny how they did the intros with kind of like a Scooby-Doo-esque style. And then you get into the game, and it's it's retro zombies but it still feels like call of duty and we are in the 80s here yet we do have futuristic weapons because it is infinite warfare and so i get the nerd character all the characters have like certain tropes and like i said in the intro i do hold the world record for the fastest round 100 ever on spaceland yet i haven't been able to beat the easter egg so i think that says something about the difficulty of this easter egg although there are other maps in this video that are far harder i do have a lot of spaceland content on the channel so i'm going to go over spaceland really fast compared to the other maps so i grab neil's head so so then I can get some tickets because I'm going to need to buy quite a few things. The first step of the Easter egg is to turn on the power and link all the portals to the Pack-a-Punch. I then grab Tough Enough on the way, which is Juggernog. And then here I link my first portal. I need to do four of them. I grab a rewind grenade at a ticket stand. These rewind grenades are awesome. And then I turn on the power and grab the NV4 in the arcade. I then play a little bit of basketball. The arcade on Spaceland is amazing. I love it. To be honest, I wouldn't have been mad if they just made the arcade a side mode where you could just go in there and have fun with no zombies. I then grab a green token and then link my second portal. I need three green tokens. I did grab the NV4 to make some of Neil's challenges a bit easier. I then made my way inside of Polar Peaks, turned on the power and grabbed Speed Caller. I'm not really sure why I grabbed Speed Caller at this point. I didn't really need it, but whatever. And then I added one of my green tokens to this machine and then added a second green token to the machine as well. I then open up the Kepler system. So there's different systems on this map. The maps, it's a theme park that's called Spaceland. So that makes sense. I grab Bomb Stompers, which is PhD, which is awesome on this map. It seemed like Infinite Warfare actually listened to the zombies community, but the community just shunned them because it's Infinite Warfare. I grabbed the Arcane Core on the M1 Grand and then grabbed Bang Bangs, which is double tap. I then entered the bottom part of the map and grabbed Racing Stripes, which is stamina up. And now I have all my perks and I'm pretty much completely set up except for Pack-a-Punch, which finally I do the last portal, enter the Pack-a-Punch and Pack-a-Punch my M1 Grand because I do have the Arcane Core on it. I'm not exactly sure how the Arcane Core actually works when you don't have the UFO Core, but I'm pretty sure it does more damage. Maybe someone can comment below what exactly the arcane core does when you don't have the UFO core. I then add my third green coin and then I can get my first part for the head cutter wonder weapon. In the same area, I activate this massive laser trap and this will both give me a lot of tickets and also allow me to destroy the UFO that's floating around this area. In the meantime though, I go to the guy who was in SpongeBob and then grab the SETICOM. And now because I got enough kills with the laser trap, I can now destroy the UFO. I do eliminate Brute there, the boss. He's awesome on this map as well and then i pick up the ufo fuse that drops and now my m1 grand is ridiculously strong and because i got the fuse at the end of my m1 grand with the arcane core now it makes these seti com steps really easy all i gotta do is put the seti com down once every round for three rounds and we're getting very close to beating the map already here and things are pretty easy because we went through a long setup process i then went back to the arcade to get some golden teeth and then started playing some more basketball on the arcade once the round ended and i actually got a score of 120 which i'm pretty sure it's like the highest you can get let me know in the comments has anyone ever gotten a score of 135 is that actually possible maybe if you're on co-op i don't know i've only ever played this map solo now of course there are the iconic i don't know why i'm saying iconic but i mean they're pretty damn cool the clown rounds on spaceland in my opinion one of the coolest boss zombie rounds obviously dogs is the iconic version i'm not sure why i said the clown's worth and then do my last seti com and i did forget to mention that each round you have to protect the seti com and the time goes up so it is actually 
actually kind of a hard step, but like I said, with this M1 Grand and the Arcane Core, it is just such an OP weapon. And if it wasn't in Spaceland, I feel like the, the map just wouldn't work as well. I then throw a Cryo Freeze Grenade at this Yeti, which then shoots out ice that freezes the zombies, and then I need to get headshots on these frozen zombies. And this is one of many times where I really just like Infinite Warfare zombies. I mean, they do clever things like this, like once or twice every map, where it's just, it's just clever, man. And then by doing this, I do get a battery for the head color. There are four wonder weapons on this map, but I get the head color because I don't really know how to get the other ones, to be completely honest. And so now I need a brute to just get stuck under here. And then I need to use my golden teeth and I can finally get the final part for the head color. So one of the brutes does get stuck under there. And so I do place a golden teeth, kill one of the brutes, and then shoot this little compartment here, which gives me the last part for the head cutter. And then I dodge the other brute very luckily and then eliminate him. And you can see how much damage I'm doing into him. He's like a two shot kill. I go to SpongeBob guy again and he gives me my final part after the SETI com. And I also grab the head cutter from this little alien here. And you can see it just cut, takes off the heads and leaves like a colorful little explosion. Pretty cool wonder weapon. Now this is a step that enters you into the boss fight and it's kind of confusing to explain. So I'm gonna kind of skip over it. But basically I just put down these tones these tone machines around the pack a punch machine and then it makes it so you can't leave this area and the ufo will show colors and then you just have to play those colors back in the same order that you the ufo showed so it's really not that hard and you just have to do it three times it's a very easy step really if you just have a piece of paper and you monitor the pattern of the colors that the ufo shows and then just replay the colors because each tone has a color to it and you can see here the alien comes out of the pack a punch room and now i just have to take him out so the way you defeat this alien is i'm actually not sure if you have to use the one weapon i think so i don't think you can damage him with a normal weapon maybe le let me know in the comments because i'm dumb but you just i shoot him with the wonder weapon anyway with the head color and then if you shoot him enough he'll go down and then you need to hit him in the back and you need to do that twice and then the third time you just need to kill him and so there i did the first one so i was shooting him while he was on the roof so he came down and and so once he came down he was knocked and then all i had to do was slap him in the back not every time you knock him will you have a chance to actually hit him here this was actually like two iq moves from me. I don't know how I messed this up so badly. I should have just used my M1 Grand. I nearly go down being an absolute idiot there, but I do miss the slap as well. So now he's back at full health. And here I learned from my mistake. So last time I used the Cryophrenes Grenade and then the head cutter. This time I used the M1 Grenade Grand, and it worked. And I go to slap him in the back and I miss because some zombies spawned right on his ass. So that was unfortunate. This time, however, I just use a Cryophrenes when I knock him again. It actually does take a while to knock him. I'm just showing you when I do knock him. A lot of people do struggle with this Easter egg. It's not that hard if you just run around in a circle um, from where I am and then go underneath and then back around. But boom, I finally kill the alien and win the boss fight, but not quite. I have to now defeat the UFO and the UFO steps always super confusing to me. So I grab this valve here, which allows me to double pack a punch. And I think you have to double pack a punch the headhunter here. When I was watching Easter egg guides for this map, a lot of YouTubers try and rush their guides like the day after the map comes out. So a lot of the guides just don't explain shit at all. I have to admit. And so I don't know half the stuff I'm even doing in this game. I'm just trying to figure it out myself, basically. But I didn't understand how I had to kill the UFO. So I lured him over here. I knew I had to shoot this little thing here. And then boom, it zapped up, came out of the pack of punch and shot upwards and killed him. I nearly went down here, though. Very lucky I survived. I had quick revive, so I would have been fine. But boom, that's the final boss fight because the UFO is actually pretty hard to kill. And then I grabbed the soul key. You need that for when you get the director's cut. That's, this, that's when you actually finish the Easter egg. And it took me an hour to do this easter egg and i think infinite warfare will forever be in my top three maps of all time but i would even say some of these other infinite warfare maps i like even better and so in continuing that story we actually transport to raven the redwoods with willard wyler getting really pissed off that we didn't die in that film and so now he sends us to a rave in the redwoods and uh this is very scooby-doo-esque except for it's a bit more gory than scooby-doo i would say but it's kind of like they're just having a rave, they're having a good time, and then a zombie comes. It looks so much like Scooby-Doo, except for the blood. <laughs> and then, boom, our gang is sent to a cabin in the woods. And now we do move forward in time into the 90s, and we're at Bear Lake Camp. And so this map is very much a slasher kind of zombies map. You'll see what I mean later on in the video, especially. It almost feels like a zombies game inside of the Friday the 13th world. And our characters in the first map, they don't change, but get different styles to suit a rave in the 90s. Now, at the very start here, I go up the stairs and grab the M1 Grand and also 
also the spiked baseball bat. They do start to change a lot of the weapons on each of the maps. So you'll see in future maps, I won't be using the M1 Grand every game. And I really like that. There's a lot more variety in the gameplay and a lot of the weapons in this game are awesome. So as you just saw, I picked up my first part for the boat because we need to go over a lake and then I make my way to the power and get the power on, which just turns on the power for the entire map. I don't need to do multiple switches and then I get tough enough. And then I also grab another piece to the boat. Instead of dog rounds and clown rounds, we have Bigfoot rounds and these guys are pretty strong. I mean, they, they suck at the higher rounds, but in the low rounds, they're kind of annoying. And my M1 Grand would take like 10 shots to kill him. So I just use my baseball bat. After starting to open up the map, I then see that I have a statue that I need to pick up down here. So I come to this rock climbing area. And yes, you can do like rock climbing, but it is sometimes awkward. And you'll see here, I accidentally jump into a zombie and then there's like 20 zombies down here already. So I, I had a very questionable start on this map. So I use my Fate and Fortune card that regenerates my health faster. And then I grab the Reaver, which is a really, really good shotgun. And then I also pick up a blue coin. And then I deposit into an eagle statue. I want a blue, blue, and a yellow so then I can get the balloon trap, which is awesome as you guys will see later. I then pick up my final boat part and then bang bangs. And then I chilled at the rave area for a while and got enough points for speed caller as well. I finally make it down to the lake and grab my last two statues, which will allow me to grab the crossbow, the explosive one. And then eventually I'll be able to upgrade that into a super overpowered wonder weapon. So around the map, there's a lot of fires. And if you activate the fire, you get put into rave mode, which allows you certain Easter egg steps. Here, I did it way too early. So whilst I'm in the rave mode, I make my way to the boat and cross the lake. I then talk to Kevin and also grab the reel, grab the reel and a sausage and then add the reel to the film to create the pack punch machine. And then I jump up on the zip line. This is such a cool dynamic. Let me know in the comments. I'm very curious. Do you guys like Raven in the Redwoods? Because I think it's one of the mo more popular maps on Infinite Warfare with Spaceland. And I could definitely see why. It's a lot of fun casually. Some of the other maps, the Easter egg's a lot of fun, but casually it'd be a bit harder to play. And so with the sausage, now I can go into the rave mode and grab three different parts by throwing sausage at deer heads on the wall and then shooting the deer head. And then it drops like a little I guess blue token and so now that I've done that step I can finally grab the explosive crossbow the Vlad it's called and I grab bomb soppers I love PhD on this game I, the perks in this game they don't really change that much they add a, a few new perks each map but I really like the perk system in this game and mechanically the game just feels so smooth and nice the jumping system I then pick up a sticker that was activated once I talked to Kevin and now I have to do a ritual where I shoot the arms off the zombies this step's actually kind of a bit of a pain in the ass so I like to do it nice and early and that's why I'm doing it here at round 11 and then once you've shot enough arms off the zombies you can pick up this blue glowing thing on the ground and then a slasher will spawn in and you need to kill him in a certain amount of time the slasher is pretty crazy to kill and hence why this fits the vibe of a slasher horror movie because uh, you literally have to kill a slasher and you'll see the main boss at the end I'm sure most of you guys have actually done this before but he's a mega slasher boss guy I then put the four statues that I picked up earlier on these stereos and I have to kill a certain amount of zombies to charge them I then add my final blue token to the eagle statue and now i have the balloons and then i grab stamina up and make my way to the deer statue from which i place the deer statue that i charge and now it acts like a soldier so i just need to kill a bunch of zombies charge up the deer again only using the vlad and then once i picked up the charged deer i then have the vlad upgraded and there's four different versions this is this is what i heard was the best version i've never used the other versions before but personally i think this thing's super good i don't know how it holds up in the high rounds but at least before round 30 this thing is awesome. We're getting pretty close to the boss fight now so I start packet punching my Envy 4. You can pack a punch it twice because I beat the Easter egg on Spaceland but first I just start with the, the first pack a punch. Finally I do use the balloon trap that I got from the Eagle Altar and this thing is awesome especially for this ritual. I save it for this ritual. In the first ritual I had to remove the zombies arms. In this ritual I have to remove their legs and the balloons like half the zombies I'm pretty sure. And so this makes the ritual very very easy and also this balloon trap's just kind of overpowered and again once I remove a lot of the zombies legs I then have a slasher spawn in and I have to remove him pretty fast. I do because I have the Pack-a-Punch MV4 now. But even though the Pack-a-Punch MV4 is really strong, I do Pack-a-Punch it a second time. I love the double Pack-a-Punch in this game. You can do it on every map and it does actually make your gun a lot better. So onto my final ritual here. All I have to do is get headshots. So the first ritual, I had to remove the arms of the zombies. The second one, I had to do the legs. And now the third one, all I have to do is get headshots. So it's actually the easiest ritual. And it's the last one. And then again, I have to kill a slasher. I absolutely destroy him with this double Pack-a-Punch MV4. And I use my Wonder Weapon to make sure I don't go down in this situation. And this is the final step until we get into the boss fight here. And in my opinion, this boss fight is actually pretty easy compared to some of the other ones, though I still don't think it's the easiest boss fight. So I go and press this red button here and that actually initiates it. And now I just need to go back to the boat and Kevin Smith's going to be waiting in this boat. So if you don't know who Kevin Smith 
is he's an American filmmaker, an actor, comedian, a comic book writer, author, YouTuber, and podcast. I just Googled it. And so the reason Kevin Smith is in this map is because Willard Wyler has trapped him in the map. And then he makes him the super slasher, the main boss fight. So essentially, we're killing Kevin Smith's character in Infinite Warfare Zombies. Very bizarre. Very cool though. The super slasher then hits the water, which then causes the boss fight to actually begin. And so he will jump up on the roof there and there's four stages to this and you have to repeat it three times. He will eventually come off the roof and you have to really be careful of that. He'll come off in about 20 seconds here. And so at the start of it, all you want to do is just fill the soul jar here. You just need to kill a bunch of zombies until that glowing ball of blue light, I guess I'll just call it that, goes fully into the air and then you just need to do it on the other side of this boss fight area. Really easy and what I do is I just save all of my crossbow ammo and then use it whenever there's zombies spawn in. I mean, it's really not that hard of a step. You just gotta be careful for the super slasher. And then once you complete both of the balls of energy, they will then link up and cause a little circle on the ground from which you want the super slasher to walk into. And then you just need to shoot them after that. And that's second stage already done. This third stage here, it's very simple. I mean, this boss fight is actually not that hard, really. And I think that's where I see some criticism of this map is that it's pretty easy. I actually think attack of the radioactive thing, the boss fight's easier. Where I think a lot of people say that's really hard. I thought that was actually quite easy, but that's a great boss fight as well. This is probably my least favorite boss fight, I have to admit, but I do really like Raven in the Redwoods. I think casually it might be my favorite map. All you gotta do in this stage is just shoot the circles that appear on the super slasher. It's very simple. Not many zombies will spawn in. Just gotta make sure he doesn't jump on you. And then he will go back up on his house once you finish that, and then he will spawn in a green circle, and there'll be just fire all around it. So you just wanna hop into the green circle. Again, very easy. Skeletons will spawn in. Just use your crossbow on them because they, they have a lot of health so you have to use your crossbow and then that's pretty much it you just repeat that three times like i said not the hardest boss fight and then at the final stage all you have to do is just shoot him you don't have to shoot any circles on his body just shoot him in the head and then you will have eliminated the super slasher and i just want to take a moment to appreciate how good he actually looks when he dies <laughs> as weird as that sounds and where he dies you can then pick up the soul key and then we're moving on to the next map with our characters now it is important to note that willard wyler did sell his soul to a demon called Mephistopheles and hence why it looks like the slasher actually goes down into hell and the whole reason he sold his soul was so he could trap people in his movies to become victims to the monsters within his films so the story behind this map is there was a lawyer who was a billionaire he went bankrupt stole a bunch of money and then got arrested and then he escaped and then drank a vial of the number 13 transforming him into the rat king although i'm not the biggest fan of willard wyler i do like his concepts though i must admit that would make a pretty good movie now shaolin shuffle actually goes back in time to the 70s and i found this really interesting thing in the intro where it says 400 million theme park to open in october which i'm assuming is spaceland because spaceland actually happened after shaolin shuffle and then it also says what's next after landing on the moon and we all know what happens in a beast from beyond i mean that's they land on nightfall so i just thought that was interesting when i first started playing shaolin shuffle i actually thought oh maybe this is where the zombie maps start to go downhill but after a little bit i was like oh no this map's great as well i mean you start off with space land then you get raven and redwoods two great maps then you get shaolin shuffle which you know, is my favorite map i think in infinite warfare zombies there's so many things you can do on shaolin shuffle and there's so many ways to get really good weapons and i feel like this map's just super underrated and i can kind of get it because the map does look a bit grimy a bit dirty so visually not my favorite map but it definitely grew on me and also the easter egg steps do get a lot more complicated a lot harder but once i started to learn them i i stand by that this is my favorite map in infinite warfare although it's still not my favorite boss fight we still have another map to come that will be my favorite boss fight so on this map you can activate fighting abilities so i chose the tiger style and for the first step of the easter egg all you need to do is get 15 kills with your fighting ability that you choose and so after i do that i then open up the map i turn on the power in different locations there's not just one switch on this map you have to turn it on in four different locations i then activate the tiger style again because you can actually open different kind of doors using it and then you can also also open portals which is awesome there's four portals on this map and they connect together and you can actually open them by using your fighting ability and punching a door because this is quite a big map it really helps with traveling so finally here i turn on my last switch for the power and this is like raven the redwoods it fully opens the map after you turn on the final power and i'm able to get tough enough i then make my way to the rpr evo which is essentially the ripper from call of duty ghost and i do put diamond on a lot of my weapons because i really like the diamond camo in this game let me know in the comments if you guys agree with me because i'm not sure if that's a different opinion or if a lot of people agree with me 
I played a lot of Infinite Warfare multiplayer, but I never camo grinded. But genuinely, I think the diamond actually looks really sick. So as you can see, I just picked up my three parts to open the pack a punch. And you can double pack a punch on this map, but you have to go through a small process. So we'll get to that later. Now, the next step of the Easter egg does justice to the Rat King. We actually have to throw throwing stars at rat cages and then follow the rat around the map to the, his next cage. And you have to do it like seven times. I'm going to skip that so it's not boring. But once you do complete the step, a glowing circle will spawn and you just have to get a bunch of kills while zombies are in the circle and you're in the circle. It's a super easy step. And then once you're done, you'll get a key for a locker. You'll want to open that locker. I actually portaled all the way back to get racing stripes just so I can travel around the map faster. And then there's three places around the map with Chinese characters. And so you just need to know which Chinese characters to shoot. I shoot the first one in the main kind of area, the second one in the toilets, and then the first and the second one in this back street where there's clothes hanging out the windows. And now I can face the Rat King for the first time out of the four times I'm going to be versing him this game. Obviously, each time gets a lot harder, so this first time is pretty much just a piece of cake. And the RPR Evo is actually a really good gun for this map. Although at this stage in the game, I really hadn't played that much Infinite Warfare, so I was unaware of some of the other really good weapons that you'll see in other maps. I then got to this time clock and initiate it, and by doing this, I can actually do a mini Easter egg to get the nunchucks, which is absolutely awesome. I didn't know this the first couple times I played this map. And so what you have to do is just be really fast, press the time clock, and then punch two of the statues like you just saw. After killing the Rat King, he actually gave us the ability to scan the areas, and then I have to shoot six orange circles around the map. This step is really annoying, actually. But once I got a down pat, it, it really wasn't that bad. And I think it suits the theme of the map really well, because we are kind of doing detective work to find the Rat King. Now for this bit, I'm going to play the gameplay audio, and I just want you guys to listen carefully, because for this step, we had to use Morse code. So if you listen carefully, our first five digits was dot, 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 dash. And if we co correspond that to the screen, that is a four. And then our second five digits were dash, 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 which equals a zero. And if you look at the side there, 407 is one of the numbers we could have got. So now all we need to do is find a poster around the map. There's six different posters. We need to find the poster that has the number 407 on it. I then place the poster on this light here and use a C4 to break this window, which then spawns in a bunch of ninjas because I'm on to the next step of the Easter egg. These ninjas on Shaolin Shuffle are really strong. In this scenario, they're not at all. So I'm just going to skip right over it. But in the Easter egg boss fight, you guys will see. It's pretty crazy. So this next step, I need to use these symbols here to spell a word. And there's a lot of words that it could be. And here I actually get it wrong. And so I have to restart with a word that starts with P. And I got the word Pamgria. So really not the hardest step because there's a list of words that it could be. And then you just look at the symbols and you can see what symbols resemble what letters on a document. It's very easy. And now we move on to my next time challenge to get the nunchucks. So this time I have to go through a portal again, punch this piece of paper and it will teleport me back through the portal. And then I have to run over the tra train tracks or I jump actually, and then slap this piece of paper. And that's my second time trial done. I just need to do one more. And then I have to do the big three time time trial. I then pack a punch the RPI Evo and I have to admit, some of the pack a punch camos are pretty random in this game and then i start my third time trial and i mess this one a lot of times so i have to actually run down here and then do a 180 straight away hit the book and then it'll teleport me back and i have to hit the other book i failed that too many times to admit i really enjoy these types of side easter eggs that lead to really good weapons or equipment this is literally just a fun time trial that leads you to the nunchucks and the nunchucks are awesome in this game i then come over to this location here where i can spawn in the rat king for my second time and i eliminate him ridiculously fast like i said the evo is a very good weapon and now that i pack up it and it's only round 11 and only the second rat king it's pretty chill and i pick up the brain from him and at this stage i decide to get the dumb chuck so this time i have to actually punch this timer go down to the bottom here and punch the second timer and then you guess it i have to go down all the way into the subway and punch the third timer and voila we get to hit the magic wheel for 10 points and we're guaranteed the nunchucks i then come to the pack a punch machine and pack a punch them and then i press this button in the pack a punch room run out of the room and then use this portal over here turn straight straight to my right and grab the fuses here and this will allow me to get double pack a punch once i put them on the train tracks and let a train drive 
over them. I then pick up quickies and I place those fuses on the train tracks here. A train goes past and then I pick up these fuses. Now I actually, now I can actually get double pack a punch for both my weapons, which is going to be really important going into this boss fight. And you can see here, I go to Pam, the main character who we always talk to in this map. And you can see in the top right corner there, my screen is almost tearing like a film. So all we have to do is wait three rounds and then at some random point during the round, this message will come up and then we're going to, and then we're going to have about five zombies surrounding us. It's actually a really easy step. If you did it on a higher round though, I can imagine it'd be pretty, pretty scary. And this is the first time you'll see the nunchucks in action. In this video, you guys probably used them before. The nunchucks make that step really easy. And then I just pick up this part and place it down here in the subway. I'm not really sure the relevance of that step, but it is what it is. I'm not sure what it actually does. And then I put the fuses into the pack-a-punch machine and now I can double pack-a-punch and I get the double pack-a-punch nunchucks. And instead of a green kind of explosion, now I get a purple explosion coming out of them. And it also does more explosive damage with a larger distance. And I definitely needed to do that for this next step because I climb up these stairs and go over this wooden plank, shoot this little circle here, and it gives us the circle we got after the rat step. But this time we have like seven of the circles where we have to kill the zombies whilst we're in it and the zombies in it. And also it's a much higher round now. So the nunchucks make this step a lot easier. I then double pack a punch the Evo. And I just want to appreciate the fact that they have double pack a punch camos and normal pack a punch camos that are different for every single map. And now we're on to our final step before we have to verse the Rat King. And I'm not going to lie, this step's kind of bizarre, but you have to go to the dance floor and kill a zombie that has a disco above its head while it's dancing. Whilst you're on the dance floor and also another zombie's on the dance floor. So then the disco will go over to that other zombie on the dance floor. Sounds a bit bizarre, but it's a pretty fun step. And you only have to kill about 10 zombies by doing it. Now we have to just kill the Rat King for our third and final time before we get into the boss fight. Me, on the first time doing this, I thought this was the boss fight. I was an absolute idiot. <laughs> and I was like, oh. Wait, that was super easy because he is pretty easy to take out here, but the boss fight is definitely a different story. Not an easy boss fight whatsoever. I will probably say it's the hardest boss fight I found in Infinite Warfare, except for the Mephistopheles at the end, but we're not going to talk about that yet. So for me to actually beat this boss fight, I actually practiced a lot in the boss fight tab because now in Infinite Warfare, you can just do the boss fights for fun without having to actually do the full Easter egg. So I practiced that a bunch. Of course, this is actually after I did the full Easter egg and we got into the boss boss fire. I wouldn't just show the boss fire. It would have a timer there anyway. But the first stage is very easy. All you have to do is just take out the Rat King. He'll just hide up on the ramparts while we have to do a next step. And we have three choices. For the first one, I chose the target challenge, I'm just going to call it. But basically, you just have to shoot these targets around the map. It's one of the easier stages. Really, there's only one hard stage. And yeah, so what I use, I use my sight here and there because you can't see it if you don't have the sight. But the Rat King does pulse it here and there. And you just go around shooting the targets and the zombies will just be behind you. It's very simple, actually. And then this is the next stage where things get a lot harder. So the first time we eliminated the Rat king he didn't spawn it in any ninja zombies this time he's going to spawn in ninja zombies so i hit the trap to prevent the ninja sp zombies from spawning in because they're really bloody strong man they're very hard to kill but unfortunately i used the trap a bit too early and the rat king was using his shield here so i couldn't get enough damage into him to actually damage him enough to run away for a bit before the ninja spawned in and so i had to actually deal with the ninjas and man these things are crazy and i will say that the boss fight tab compared to the real boss fight is slightly different i didn't find that the rat king would actually go after me like this um and that's actually how i go down the end so by the time i kill the ninjas more ninjas spawn in and then the rat king actually hits me he goes after me that never happened in the boss battle so i was not expecting that and at this stage i'm like i'm dead there is actually no way that i'm going to come back from this but luckily if you go back into your ninja ability first of all i take out these ninjas though and then go into my ninja ability and you can actually punch these boxes and and in these boxes are perks and so i i just keep on slapping these ninjas until finally i do a little bit of damage on on the rat king and he goes away and then i have time just to use my ninja ability when there's no ninjas on the map this is so easy to do because you just run around in circles i mean the zombies really aren't going to do much to you but when there's ninjas on the map you're in big trouble so for this next step after the rat king ran away and i got stamina up and quick revive this step's really easy all i have to do is survive really uh so i survived that very easy i don't you don't actually have to do anything for that step except survive and yeah that's all you gotta do and so for the next stage i can actually get more perks so i get juggernaut and also bang bangs i take out the rat king again he doesn't spawn in ninjas on this stage and now we're on to the final stage and by far the hardest stage the acid stage where there's a puddle of acid and you have to be in the puddle whilst a zombie is also in the puddle to remove that puddle and you only have like 30 or 45 seconds i think which is really not enough time because the puddle damages 
as you as well. So without the nunchucks, I was really struggling. On this step, it was actually really, really hard. But with the nunchucks, I was able to actually pull it off. And once I beat that step, I was very relieved. Although I still have more ninja zombies that will spawn in. But because I went down and I took my time getting all my perks back, I was able to actually activate the trap again. So all of the ninja zombies got swooped up and then I was able to just spam my weapon on the Rat King and eliminate him. So Pam Greer then kills the Rat King and Pam Greer, by the way, is an actress who Willard Wyler has trapped into Shaolin Shuffle. Just like Kevin Smith was the actor that was in Raven the Redwoods. I then go over and pick up the soul key. This is, of course, very important if you do want to get the director's cut. And then I go over and get the katana for free because I beat the Easter egg. And so now I have the nunchucks and the katana, which is a pretty crazy setup. And then I pack a punch the katana. On the first pack a punch, you get a green explosion, just like the nunchucks. And then on the second pack a punch, you get the purple, just like you can see here. And this thing is awesome. Maybe round 100 and shell and shuffle i mean that katana is pretty insane i don't know if it's possible i don't know what the strategy would be but i barely got to use the katana and it kind of makes me sad so moving on with the story, basically the narrator just says, where's Arthur McIntosh? And then it shows Pam killing him. And then this is where things get super interesting. Because we meet Elvira, because she's going to be the actress in our next movie, the attack of the radioactive thing. But she's actually wrote this movie, I believe. And she's based off Cassandra Peterson, who played Elvira in real life. The catch is that Cassandra wanted to play as Elvira. And Willard Waller actually trapped her into the character Elvira. Though she's not a vampire. Things get kind of confusing, I have to admit. But she's wrote this script and she's on our team she wants us to beat willard waller and not give him a good show because willard just wants us to die so he can have a really good scene he's noted as having the best death scenes in film i believe he said that himself in spaceland and so now the gang is put into the 1950s and we start off in black and white just like an ascension and this map actually takes place next to a beach. You can actually go on the beach and there's a massive radioactive monster thing. That's why the map's called that. But I think the idea came from nuclear testing when they used to do nuclear testing in the ocean. And somehow through the radiation, this massive monster's come up that you'll see soon. And this is my favorite boss by far. Now, weirdly, this map does entail a lot of chemistry. So my character is actually a scientist. And when I hit the zombies, I actually use a flask, which is kind of funny. It seems like in Infinite Warfare, the creators really went to great lengths to make each map very unique from the other and that goes with characters as well i mean they're the same characters but at different ages and with different clothes and styles to the point where they don't even look like the same characters anymore so i only played this map twice so i'm not sure how you actually get the color back but whenever i opened this door it seemed like the color just came back so you didn't have to turn on the power or anything like that and these little green guys are the dogs on this map and they actually get shot out from the radioactive thing i then make my way down to the beach and pick up this hand because that's the only way i can actually turn on the power i need the hand to to turn on the switch then and then i start grabbing a lot of my parts i'm just gonna skip right over grabbing all these parts because there's like 12 or 13 parts that you actually grab and finally enough i grab three parts to build this device that will then give me another part now i haven't actually done that many easter eggs in zombies i'm more of a high round player as you guys know and this easter egg is probably the most extensive one i've ever done you literally have to do chemistry in it later on there are a lot of cool things you can do though like i grab this knife from the shark's body and then i grab tough enough and then make my way down to the beach and then grab the osa i believe that's how you pronounce it i then come into this room here and drop my shark knife for the crowbar and this is pretty cool i'll show you some of the parts i get through the crowbar i have to smash that window and i also smash the mirror off of a car to grab a part i then press a button which initiates a deep freeze in the freezer room which then allows me to use a crossbow to completely destroy this piece of meat i then drop the crowbar for the shark knife again because i need to fill up a vial by using the cleaver i should say it fills up my vial from which then i can get another part and i get a foot i go to elvira and talk to to her after the stage and then she actually comes out of her seat and will start helping us fight she's been a victim to willard wilder as well as us and she also helps activate the pack a punch machine for us i then grab bang bangs and enter the portal and pack a punch my osa or if it's pronounced osa i'm actually not sure don't get mad at me in the comments i apologize i then pick up bomb stoppers and then make my way back into the protection room press this button here and just like shall and shuffle this is how we're gonna get double pack a punch i got the crowbar back jumped up broke the drawer and then i also note this number that's on the fridge here not only is there chemistry on this map but there's also maths i then pick up quickies and you can probably notice that i use the same perks for every map they do add different perks on some of the maps but i didn't even bother learning how to use them because i just wanted to get this video out for you guys and i didn't want it to take forever i then pack a punch the kendall's which are amazing of course with bomb stoppers as well it's really good combo i haven't even pack a punch the kendall's yet in this video so i definitely had to do it on this map i then add a battery into this radio here which then tells me what i need to actually destroy 
destroy the radioactive boss. And the radio can tell you different things. And depending on what it tells you, you have to do different chemistry. And I got ditroxypropane or something like that. And so this radio step is really important. So as you can see in the gameplay, I actually put my fuses inside of this trap and then turn the trap on. And then after the trap ends, I then have my powered fuses. I can then take them to the Pack-a-Punch machine, add the fuses, and now I can actually do the double Pack-a-Punch. And I double Pack-a-Punch the Kendall, which gives me a Kimbo kin Kendall's, which is absolutely awesome. And then I get Stamina Up, or otherwise known as Racing Stripes. And then I use one of the cool functions on this map where you can actually change the colors. And you change the colors so that you can look at these three numbers around the map and every time you change the color one of those numbers is crossed out and so it's just a process of elimination i'm not going to explain this very thoroughly because i'm just going over it quickly this is not a guide so doing this process i learn out that my number was four i then came over to this area here and i looked at this number and now i had to times four by this number so 48 and then i had to look at the monitor next to elvira and look at which color matches my number and the color that matched it was green because 48 is greater than 47 so after knowing that i have to go into green i then take screenshots shots of all of the boards around the map in the color green because I need to look at some of the numbers on the boards that relate to some of the items. I then go back to full color and then come over to this table here that's right next to a safe and I make note of this number so it's 4494 so I have to go over to these pipes and I have to hit with my crowbar at the exact same time that the little toggle reaches the number that I need and then after doing that the safe opens and then I get the number 78325 and I write that down on a piece of paper because I'm going to need that for the very end of the boss fight. I then come into this laser room here where I have placed all of the parts of the zombie I have built. So through this game, pretty much all the parts you get actually build a zombie. And so I just put mirrors in this little laser room here or the laser later on. And I do apologize if this is confusing, but trust me, it's worth it once you see the boss fight. And to actually activate the laser, we have to play this little game here. And it's actually a really hard step. It took me like 40 minutes probably, but I finally did it right there. It was a number guesser. You never got given the number you had to just through trial and error, learn what the number is. And then once you learn the number, you put it in, the laser will then strike the zombie. And once the laser activates, the zombie actually comes alive. And then you have to put that same number that you just put in, but this time backwards. And then the laser will then activate again and you'll be able to get a key. So now onto everyone's favorite part, the chemistry steps. Now I'm not going to go in depth on this at all. I'm just going to skim through it. But the first thing I got were some pennies and then I got some vodka and added it all to the chemistry table. Worked out the maths with those screenshots that I got earlier, the value of those products and then minus it by four because that was the number that I got when I was looking at the colors. I know it's really confusing and trust me, it was for me when I did this. And the reason I'm using these certain products to create certain chemicals is because I'm trying to get ditroxypropane because remember when i had the radio stepped it said that's how i'm going to defeat the boss and if you actually see here i do make three four dinitroxy methyl propane and this is the very last step so then i double pack a punch the osa come back and add the three four dinitroxy propane to this missile and so now we're going to get into the boss fight and we want this missile to get into the, the boss's mouth because like i said on the radio it said we need three four dinitroxy methyl propane to actually kill the boss and now it's in the rocket and we're just taking the rocket towards the beach towards the monster this step's really easy and we get it right to the water here and the boss actually launches up and the rocket goes into his mouth and now we're already on to the second stage of the boss fight and if you remember back to in raven the redwoods boss fight i said that this is the easiest boss fight in infinite warfare zombies and i still stand by that so the second stage all i have to do is go in the trap and whenever he's about to zap me i just shoot that little circle thing in his body and i just have to do it three times it's super easy and then i make my way back down to the bridge activate the missile again for some reason even though the missile went into his mouth i have to activate it and then it will magically appear back to where it was thrown from i also activate elvira through her book i don't think it actually worked though and then we're on to the third stage from which the radioactive thing just launches gas three times so the start he just launches it really close down on the beach and then he does it half the beach and then he does three quarters of the beach i really wasn't troubled at all though because i could just sit back there and kill them all with my double packed osa or my double packed kendals and then on the final stage the radioactive thing activates some traps and we just have to run through them in about 10 seconds and this step's really easy as well and really fun i really like it like i said this is my favorite boss fight it is the easiest but it's really sick as well and then on to the killing stage of the boss fight where you get placed into the animal or thing i should say and then you have to put in the code that we got earlier from the save into the nuke and it will blow up the monster and then boom we've won the map and like i said i actually love this map a lot of fun I'm not sure about how it would be casually but for the 
Easter egg's sake, it's a lot of fun. I'm pretty sure it took me the longest to do as well. It took me an hour and 40 minutes. We did grab the fourth soul key in the cutscene here, and then we transport to a spaceship. So we've gone from the 80s to the 90s to the 70s to the 50s, and now we're in 2200. And we're heading to a planet, and on this planet is Nightfall. And if you guys remember, Nightfall is a map in Extinction. So in this world, Willard Waller actually made Extinction on Nightfall, and so this is a rewrite of it. This shit is kind of confusing, I have to admit. But I like it. It's pretty cool. The premise of it, anyway. And at the very last moment here, Point Dexter says, Zombies aren't going to be the least of our problems. So like I said, this map is set in 2206. And we're actually on Nightfall. And so there's actually going to be the Scout aliens at the start of this game. And also, I do spawn in with the Oso. I don't know why I do. I guess because the Scout aliens are actually pretty hard at the start. They kind of are, to be honest. And the, the Kendall pistol probably wouldn't be enough. It's, it's really bizarre why they did this. But I guess, it's, I, like... I don't really mind, to be honest, that they did the aliens at the start here. But then I make my way to get the power on because, like I said, by round four, I actually start to struggle a lot with these aliens. And I grab Neil's head and then make my way back to the spawn room and put Neil's head in here, which activates the power and makes it so the scout aliens don't spawn in unless it's a dog round because they're the dogs for this map. And now zombies are finally spawning in again, which is almost like a sigh of relief when you do it on this map. I then jump back down here and grab tough and off. I then throw a grenade at this box, which then is skull will come out. I'm just going to shoot that. And then I start hitting the magic wheel. This was pretty much one of my first games on this map as well. So I had no idea where the wall weapons were. I don't even know what this gun's called. I got from the magic wheel, but it's pretty good. It almost looks like a world at war gun, but it's in infinite warfare. Kind of bizarre. Maybe it is. And it's a remade. I do, really don't know the weapons. I did play multiplayer on this map, on this game, but not enough to remember. And then I stand on this red cross here. I just need to do it for a minute. It's super easy, especially when you're on round six, like I am now. And this enables me to jump and hit this skull, which then unlocks the entangler. So by doing those two skulls, I then unlock the entangler, which I need for quite a lot of steps in this map, including the one where I go to this vent here. I pick up an item that has symbols on it and I put it in the vent and you can see the puff of smoke and then the item comes out into another vent that I can actually pick up. I then start picking up the pieces to the bridge for the pack-a-punch, pick up two of them here, and then I make my way back into this room where I got the entangler, press this button, and then the laser opens a portal. I was not expecting this when I was going through this map I, and I was watching guides on how to play it. I then take the portal into the theater and get speed caller and you can see the theater's playing it's really cool this whole area is really nice and i know a lot of people don't like the beast from beyond but i think it's not that bad i mean i've never played it casually but the easter egg's pretty fun but i guess because it's the last map it's a bit disappointing and it is probably the le my least favorite easter egg but the boss fight i actually enjoyed because it, it is the hardest boss fight in my opinion i then grab my final part for the bridge and the reason i'm building this bridge is so then i can get to the packer punch and this area here is just beautiful i mean that sounds cringe, but it looks really nice, man. This is one of the best looking areas in all of zombies. Like, it just looks so nice. And then over here is another one of these symbols. I go into the pack a bunch, and then once I come out, the blue alien actually spawns in from extinction. I go all the way back to the spawn, because once the blue alien dies, he actually drops another symbol. So that's three symbols we've gotten. And then I pick up the space helmet with the entangler and drag it all the way into this area. And then I make sure the helmet is thrown through the barrier and actually hits the monitors. And that will open this area, and then I get my fourth symbol. And then for these symbols, I then have to line them up in correct order into Neil's machine. The first time I actually messed this up, the second time I did it, it's really not that hard. You just look at a document on the internet. I then make my way back into this theater area and right next to the brute cardboard cutout, I can grab this little button here and I drag it with the entangler all the way to this poster of the beast from beyond. And this will allow me to continue on to my next step from which at the very start of moving any of these, I need to make every single horizontal bar move once. That's going to sound confusing as well. And to be honest, it is maybe the most frustrating step I've heard a lot of people complain about. For me, I was lucky. I watched Noah J456 video and he actually played it really well. And so what I did was I took a screenshot before I moved any of them. And then I just moved all the horizontal ones from the screenshot. And we've officially hacked Neil. I then make my way back into the theater for the third time and get the VPR. This is probably the best gun on Infinite Warfare. I then shoot this box and grab the fuses. And then throw the fuses onto Bigfoot's hand here. Grab this reel. Take it to the Pack-a-Punch machine and put it onto the pack a punch machine go back to the theater activate the trap use the entangler to pull something from the trap and it's actually gonna be the brute's helmet drag the brute's helmet all the way to the cardboard cutout of brute put it onto the chair then press interact with it and you'll pick it up and then you can put it onto the brute's head and it will shoot a laser out onto the fuses on bigfoot's hand and then you can pick up the fuses and that's how you get double pack a punch so a really cool way to get it this is another example like on spaceland where i said the yeti 
with the cryo freeze grenades was awesome. This is just as cool. I then go back to Neil and grab his head from his machine where I first placed him to turn on the power. And I have to drag him. He will be closing doors and opening doors and a bunch of zombies will spawn in while I'm doing this. And if I drop Neil's head, he will nuke the round and I will have to do that really annoying vertical horizontal step again with those bars. I failed a few times and uh, that's why I actually ended up doing this at round 15. Here I enter the projection room, place Neil's head into this computer here, and now I can activate the boss fight. So first of all, I just get completely set up. I get double pack punch on my VPR and then enter the boss fight. And I practiced this boss fight many times before actually doing it in the boss fight tab because I knew this one was going to be really hard. And it definitely is. So there's only four stages to this boss fight, which is really nice. And the first one is just when these massive rhino aliens spawn in. I just take them out really fast with the VPR. If you don't have the VPR though, this shit's really hard, man. I mean, the VPR is a really overpowered weapon and it's double pack a punch and I was still struggling. The next stage is a bunch of aliens will just spawn from these portals and then you just have to turn off these portals after a while. Unfortunately here, I pressed T on my keyboard, which activated a text and I didn't realize. So I got a red screen and I was really lucky to clutch up here. Again, I'm going to mention it. The VPR is absolutely insane. It usually doesn't take one shot to kill an alien with any of the weapons. So at the end of this stage, another rhino will spawn in and a lot of aliens will be spawning in from all around you. So you just be very careful. And then we finally can shut down these portals by pressing interact on these computer things. You just have to do three of them and it'll shut down all the portals. And then you have to survive for 150 seconds. And this is really hard. What I do is just, I run in a circle back and forth. But if you get really bad timing, the rhinos will run into you and that's not good at all. In this scenario though, a blue alien spawned in front of me and then a bunch of blue aliens just spawned on me. I just got absolutely just destroyed. But fortunately, I quick revive. And so when I get back into the map, I can just run forward and pick up all my perks here. This is absolutely awesome how they did this on this on this boss fight. Maybe because it is a harder boss fight. And then I got to be careful because there's rhinos and blue aliens here, but I make my way to the lost and found and get my weapons. So I'm fully set up now at this stage. And all I got to do is just survive the remaining seconds in this stage. And then I hit the computer and it'll kill all of the aliens. And now the laser at the top of the room that has been opening all the crates will open the final crate where two blue rhinos will come out, which is awesome. I mean, they're really cool. And every time you damage these to a certain level, they will drop fire on the ground, blue fire. And if you run through two of these blue fires consecutively, you will go down. Like they do a lot of damage. So like I said, I practice with the boss fight tab a lot to get good at this. And I failed this step many times. And I actually do go down here, not because of the fire on the ground, but just the rhino just went ape shit on me for a second. Again, when I get back into the game, I can just run over the perks. I think you can only do that three times. Basically the amount of quick revives that exist. And I didn't know this. So when I did go down, then I fully panicked. And I got back into it. I was like, oh, phew. Got my lost and found. And one thing I learned from doing the boss battle tab multiple times is that it might look like you can't run through the fire, but you might be able to just run to the right of it. I, don't ever try and jump over the fire because it doesn't work. I always just run just a little bit to the left or the right of the fire on the ground. And then I finally take out my second rhino and that is it. I've beaten every single Infinite Warfare Zombies map and we get the final cutscene where we grab the last soul key and then get sent directly to the theater. Now, this final cutscene, I don't know how to explain. I've looked at a lot of theories. It's really confusing to me and it's left open. Now, I haven't beaten the Mephistopheles boss fight. Technically, Mephistopheles is the super boss fight. So he's not part of these maps. So I'm actually going to do a separate video just on Mephistopheles boss fight because he is arguably the hardest boss fight in zombies history. And so I'm just going to play this cutscene out at the very end here because it's up to your own interpretation. To me, it seems like Willard Weiler was happy that we succeeded because it meant that we didn't lose our souls. But because we put him into Spaceland zombies, we then become the new Willard Weiler. So I don't think I'll fully understand this cutscene until I actually do the Mephistopheles boss fight. And like I said, it's up to your own interpretation. So I'm just going to play it quickly though. This game is super underrated. I love Infinite Warfare Zombies. It fits my taste like a glove, if that's the correct saying. And now that I've completed every single map, I can use all of my soul keys to unlock the director's cut, which spawns me in with 25,000 points and every single perk in the game. Absolutely insane. And I'm going to be coming for this demon, man. You've done it. My goodness. You've finally done it. Yeah. We've done it all right, but we just got one more thing to do. Unhand me this instant! Give me a moment to explain! Don't you understand what has taken place? Shut up! We sick of you, your lies, and all this voodoo bullshit! It's time for a taste of your own medicine, you sick bastard! You have no idea the magnitude of what you're dealing with! You must listen, or all hope will be lost! You know what to do, Poindexter. I beg of you, listen for a mere moment! 
Zombies in Spaceland, now starring Willard Wyler. Please, no! You'll only make matters worse than they already appear to be. Countless souls are at stake. We must work together. Ah! Is, is this nightmare over? Are we finally free? I don't care to find out. Let's just get the hell out of this place while we can. Uh, it won't budge! What in the hell won't it open? Oh, what in the hell is going on, man? Oh, no. What have we done? Come on, help! 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 Somebody help! help! You have served thy master well. Your death was merely the beginning. <laughs>